Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining us today for this very, very important event. I'm very excited to be here. It's very important that you're interested in knowing what you can do to help control life-threatening bleeding and help save lives. I'm Dr. Bamparas. I'm one of the trauma surgeons here at Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles. And over the next 20 minutes or so, I'm gonna talk to you about the Stop the Bleed program and I'm gonna show you some very, very simple skills that you can use to stop life-threatening bleeding and help save a life. Please leave your comments on the page and I will answer all of your questions at the end of this presentation. Now, you may or may not know that bleeding is the most common cause of death after an injury. And when I say this, you're probably thinking of mass shooting events or terrorist attacks, and that's accurate to some degree, but the reality is that in our day-to-day -day job, what we see is life-threatening bleeding from injuries that happen in the streets because of accidents, injuries that happen at work, or even injuries that happen at home. Now, we here at Cedar sinai we're a level one trauma center, fully equipped and always ready to help anybody with any kind of injury overcome and survive their injuries. But unfortunately, many victims after their injury, they don't get a chance to get here or to get to any other hospital. Now, every minute counts. Life-threatening bleeding can lead to death within just a few minutes and sometimes within less than five minutes. What the Stop the Bleed aims to do is to make you, instead of bystanders, just watching that victim die and just waiting for the paramedics to show up, it will make you first responders. It will make you an extension of us. It's us, the paramedics, and now it can be you. Those few minutes after the injury where, where a victim has life-threatening bleeding are extremely important and crucial where you can intervene and you can stop the bleed and give that victim the time and chance and opportunity to get to the hospital and not die from their injury. Stop the bleed program is essentially like the CPR that you all know, and it's very simple to do for patients with cardiac arrest, but this one is for bleeding. And I will show you that it's even easier than CPR. Now, please, Click again, click on that link if you wanna register for these classes. And if you have any comments, please leave them on the page and I will answer all of your questions at the end of this presentation. I'm gonna have Janan join me so I can show you how easy it is for somebody who has no idea what a wound is or what life-threatening bleeding is, how she can learn very easily and in just a few minutes what to do to stop life-threatening bleeding. Janan is a writer. Have you ever done this, Janan, before? No. <laughs> you have no idea, right? No. Okay, so, Janan, if you see somebody bleeding in front of you, what is the first thing that you are gonna do? Um, call 911. That's a very good answer, and you need to get 911 immediately, as soon as possible, because I said, every minute counts. Mm -hmm. But before you do that, it's extremely important that you make sure that you are going to be safe. In some situations, just running to help might be actually very dangerous. You need to make sure that you're going to be safe when you're providing your help. Because if you don't, you will not be able to provide your help and you yourself may become a victim. And we don't want that, Janan, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. So after you make sure that you're safe, then you go to A, B, C. Very simple. A is for alert. You just said that. You're gonna call 911. Again, every minute counts. If you cannot do it, make sure that somebody else does it. Okay. You wanna help, but you also want to get things moving so these patients can get to the hospital as soon as possible. Okay. B is for bleeding. You need to recognize whether your victim has life-threatening bleeding. And we'll show you more when you join our classes for uh, the stop the bleed, but we're not talking about paper cuts. Okay. We're talking about bleeding that's active, that can lead to death within just a few minutes. Mm -hmm. So 
After you do that and you recognize the injury, the third thing is C. C is for compress, okay? You need to compress that wound somehow to make sure that the bleeding is gonna stop. And you can achieve that with three different ways. One is with direct pressure, the second is with packing, and the third is with applying a tourniquet, okay? So let's go over each one of those. I'm gonna show you here. Let's imagine that this is a leg okay. and this wound is actively bleeding. Okay. So what you can do is just use a very simple gauze that you can find anywhere, okay? And you just put it over the wound and you apply pressure as hard as you can. Okay. And this might seem easy, but if you need to do this for several minutes, it can actually be hard. So why don't you try to do this now? This is a simple gauze. This is your wound that's actively bleeding. So, Oops. good. And on this device, I'm gonna see whether the pressure that you're applying is enough to achieve that bleeding control. Very good, Janan. Okay. You're, you're very strong. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure if I have you stay, this, if stay like this for five, 10 minutes, you're gonna be very, very tired. And that's very normal. Now, if you don't have a gauze, right. yeah. what are you gonna use? My shirt? Yes, your okay. shirt or the victim shirt. Yeah, just okay. use anything that you have available to you just so you can apply the pressure that you need. Now, I was just gonna say, what if my shirt's dirty? I mean, I don't wanna infect the wound or something. Don't worry about okay. being dirty. What you're trying to do is save a life. Okay. You're not trying to prevent infections. Let okay. me deal with the infection after, Perfect. okay? Okay. <laughs> but that's a very good question, and I get that question all the time, okay? okay. You're trying to save a life, okay. not prevent infection. Okay. Now, why don't you try to do this on the side? Okay. Like this. All right. Awesome. And let's see how easy it is to do that. Okay. What do you think? This is tough. This is tough, huh? Right? I'm like right. shaking just a little. <laughs> <laughs> Good. And I can see here that you cannot really get it to the point where you're going to stop the bleed. Uh-oh. So what you can do is always okay. try to put the extremity or the wound in a, in, a, in a position where you can actually use your body. Body going down. Body going down. Okay. It helps you apply that pressure with your weight and make sure that there is a surface under the extremity that can help you achieve that effect, right? Yeah, that sounds okay. good. Okay, right, so cool. again, simple gauze, just direct pressure, hold it. Are you gonna be looking at the wound every two minutes? Maybe, I don't know, don't, probably not, I might get grossed out. <laughs> no need to look at the wound. Okay. Every time you let go, mm -hmm. your victim is gonna be bleeding, okay. okay? You just apply the pressure, you hold it there, and you keep it there until the paramedics arrive. Okay. Good? Good. Okay. Now, let's do something a little bit more complicated now. Uh -oh. So sometimes you have wounds that are very deep, okay? They're not superficial. Okay. So if you, are, if you try to apply pressure, you're, not, you're probably not gonna be able to stop that bleeding. Okay. So what you can do is start stuffing this gauze in the wound as much as you can and as deep as you can, okay? okay. This way, you will occupy all this wound space with the gauze and you will not allow for any more blood to come out. Okay. okay? And as soon as you pack it all the way, you just, again, apply the same direct pressure that I showed you over there. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So when you... And, uh, again, like if I don't have gauze, shirt, anything, I can You just... can use anything you have. Okay. And some people have actually buy these hemostatic gauzes from from pharmacies that are available everywhere and they can be used but they're a little bit more expensive but use anything that's available to you you can use just a simple cheap gauze this is kind of tough it is tough but sometimes you have much bigger wounds and you really need to keep stuffing keep stuffing in there as much as you can mm -hmm. and when you think you you have stuffed enough just keep stuffing okay. because you will see that there's more room you want to achieve that tamponade to make sure that no more bleeding is coming out of the, of the wound. Okay, I think I got it. Well, all right. I and think then that's just, pretty good. Okay, and then and just, you just hold it stay down. there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Simple. Simple. Doable. <laughs> Doable. Totally. All right. Okay. 
Now I'm gonna show you the last thing that you can do. Let's go over here. So sometimes you have injuries on the extremities, either you know the arms or legs, with wounds that are actively bleeding very quickly. Okay. And sometimes you have access to these tourniquets. These were usually used in the military, but now we have access to these. And what you can do is essentially put the tourniquet, let's say that your victim is bleeding actively from here. Mm -hmm. What you do is you put the tourniquet up and you put it above where the wound is, okay? Okay. And what you do is release that Velcro, you make sure it's tight. This is a self-adhering band and you put it on the back over here, bring it, and then you have this rod that you twist Usually you have to twist it two or three times. Okay. And then you secure it over here. And then you bring that ink band over the rod in this space. Okay. And then you bring this over. Mm. Okay? Mm. And again, you put it above the wound. And here you can write the time when you did this. Okay. If you have a pen. Okay. If you don't have a pen, it's okay. Just, we usually say that we don't want it to be there for more than two hours, but don't worry about it, okay? You okay. just put it, you stop the bleeding, just tell the paramedics when you put it as soon as they come in. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Do you wanna try to do this? Yes. Okay, why don't you use this one? I'm gonna take this sure. one off. All right, and let, okay. let's see what you can do. <laughs> All right. So right above the wound, secure it. Very tightly. good. Excellent. Bring it around. Good. And then turn the stick. You, you yeah, twist or it. Twist yeah, this. you twist that rod. What if I'm hurting? The, I mean, this is pretty tight. Oh, like, that's what if a I'm great question. Hurting because this he hurts. Or she. This yeah. hurts a lot. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that you're not doing the right thing. Okay. Okay? Uh -huh. You just have to explain to your victim that oh. what you're trying to do is to save their life. Okay? Oh, okay. okay, that's right. Just uh -huh. it's it's usually oh. better just to pass it through. Oh, to here. push it through. Okay. So you I got can, it. Yes. Perfect. Very good. Excellent. Very good. Oh, okay. 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 And then and then that's good enough. Okay. Okay. And then, and then you could, you put that. Time. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Simple. Simple. Very good. <laughs> now let me ask you something. Yes. Um, can you use other things besides this tourniquet um, to to do the same thing as you see in movies? Yeah, I mean I've seen like belts and people like rip off their shirts and then okay. tie it around their leg yeah. or something like that. You see that, that very very right. often in movies. Do you think those work? No. <laughs> They yes. do work in movies, not in real life though, okay? okay yeah. So please stick to what you know, okay? If you have access to the tourniquet, then use it. Okay. If you don't have that, then what are you gonna do? Belt. <laughs> no belt, don't use belts. Just pressure. Just pressure. It's three principles, okay? Mm -hmm. Don't forget, don't deviate from that. It's just direct pressure, packing, and if you have a tourniquet and you can apply it, that's great, mm -hmm. okay? Now the tourniquet, you can apply it over uh, um, close, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Don't make sure you don't have a cell phone or a wallet over there. Okay. But you can apply it over um, uh, the clothes. If okay? the wound is here, should I apply pressure here as well, so, even with the tourniquet? If the tourniquet has not stopped the bleeding, then mm -hmm. you can do that. Okay. If you have a second tourniquet, you can apply it above the first tourniquet. Okay. Just do whatever you can with those three things that you know to stop and control that bleeding. Okay? Easy. <laughs> Easy? So you think next time you're gonna see a victim with life and bleeding, you're gonna recognize it and you're gonna stop it? Definitely. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> so I just showed you how Janan, within just a few minutes, learned how to stop life threatening bleeding. Very simple skills that you can learn within just one hour in a free class that you can take here at Cedar Sinai Medical Center. Again, absolutely free class to stop the bleed that you can take and you can help save lives. You can help stop life-threatening bleeding and help save lives. Now, 
May is National Stop the Bleed uh, Month, and it's a great opportunity for everybody to remember and be aware that bleeding continues to kill people from trauma. What we want is your help to try to prevent these, de de these deaths from happening and to give a chance to those victims who are bleeding to make it to the hospital and receive the care they need to survive their injuries. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm very excited to be here and I'm ready to answer any questions you have that are gonna be given to me right now. So Carrie wants to know if a person is bleeding from multiple areas on the body, which area is best to treat first? Well, that's, that's a great question. And it's, it's, it's a very, um, uh, you know, complicated scenario, but I think what you can do is try to see where the bleeding is mostly coming from. And that's usually the case. You have probably one or two wounds that are bleeding the most, and you try to, to, to address those wounds first and get help. You know, you have other people around you that can help you actually put that pressure on other wounds if it's necessary but try to identify that wound that's bleeding the most and put that pressure on that wound. Julie wants to know, will you immediately see the bleeding stop if the tourniquet is tight enough? That is a great question. And you keep turning that rod until you actually stop that bleeding and you will see it immediately. You will see that the blood has stopped coming out. And that's how you know that you applied the tourniquet appropriately. That's a great question. All right. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, it was a pleasure to teach you how you can uh, stop life-threatening bleeding and help save lives. Please contact us if you have any uh, concerns or any questions. And please click now on that link to join us for the next free, absolutely free, again, free, <laughs> Stop the Bleed class uh, here at Sirius Sinai Medical Center. Thank you.